I didn't want to interrupt the the speaker. They said that the fresh disqualification notices after the new speaker took over were not issued for eight months. It was during that hearing in the Supreme Court. Everyone decided that while your lordships are seized of the matter, the speaker would not precipitate the matters or proceed further. So say to say that he did not act on those notices is completely incorrect because that was something which was agreed to by the parties. What was not agreed to by the parties was TC being injuncted. Which were not just decided, but the other issue was when we all were here, we all were at item on the fact that it did not be precipitated. It's a very wrong impression being given as if the speaker has been sitting and not even issued notices after that. Because he issued notices against us. He said we should notice it, despite what my learned friend is saying. So what's the point of uh, this kind of interjection? He, he selectively issued notices. He, there was no bar as far as he is concerned to issue notice to us. But there's a bar as far as notice to their own people. What kind of intervention is that? Just to both the parties. Anyway, one second, to one second. Both parties. One now second. Now let's, uh, no, Mr. Sibyl, for a moment, you're not clouding our mind on the correctness of Nabam on the facts of this case. Yes. That would be a very improper. We must yes. look at it straight on as a constitutional issue. Yes, yes, I agree, Malad. I'm, I'm only saying, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, what is worrying on the other hand is this. He's just putting it to you. Huh? The, on the other hand, if you say that, well, he can take all action, including on deciding on this qualification, until the motion is put, the day he's put to vote, the consequence then would may also be this, that he can affect the motion for his own removal by deciding upon the disqualification. I tell you, Lord Sister, I tell you, Lord Sister. So desire. No, no, that's, that I tell you, Lord Sister. No, that, there's a difference there, Mother. There's a difference there. Mother, his removal, his removal by the House, not subject matter to challenge. It's a legislative process. It's internal to the House. A disqualification of the same schedule, subject matter of challenge. Judicial system. Person is wrongly disqualified. Person is wrongly disqualified. You're watching so often interfering. Okay. Set it aside, we can go back. But of course, therefore, then we'll also have to factor in it's of your submission is that though a speaker then can, by deciding upon the disqualification issue, essentially affect the force of his own removal. No, but that is your Lord Sita is assuming that he will discharge his functions in a malified way. That's your Lord Sita may have to take that constitutional assumption. And the whole purpose of Kyoto Holohan. Ultimately, that was the whole basis of your initial submission. No, 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 no support. No, no, no. I, I am not being a barbiter in these matters at all. But that's another matter. That's nothing to do with it. So, the thing which seems to have been the court is that's really, otherwise, constitutionally, your argument as I mean, obviously, uh, you know, grammar facing. Your argument on reading 179 and 181 are very clear. So this, uh, at least 14 days notice of the resolution is given, is now regulated by the rules of procedure, which says first 14 days of the notice, Yes. then uh, the uh, leave is to be granted, Right. and thereafter 7 days, a period of uh, not more than 7 but, days. But some problem may arise, for example, some of the, nowadays mothers, we see diminishing meetings of sessions in, in, in parliament and in the assemblies. Well, it's budget session sometimes in some state assemblies is only five days and only seven days. So where do you get the 14 day notice? That's the other problem. We have to look at it, the ground realities, Mullahs. The constitution says 14 days notice because the constitution makers never imagined that we will make the assemblies redundant by not meeting at all. But the whole process has been, has been polluted now. We never thought. I'm not saying now. I, look, I make no political arguments in court. I've said all governments. Remember, I made all those views all over. So there's no politics in this. We are, see, this is for the country, for democracy. This is not for A or B. We, we come to power, some other party comes to power, they'll misuse it. They'll use it to your disadvantage. So let's not get into that. Read one of you. In this case, even the 11th position has not reached is your argument. Yes, yes. And this is what is happening, Malad. You, so you won't get the 14 day notice. So then how will you remove him? Now, if you have the 14 days notice, even if it is earlier, Malad, then you can't say he's disqualified. It's the second proviso. It's a very yes. interesting proviso. Yes. Provided further that whenever the assembly is dissolved, 
the speaker shall not vacate wow. his office until immediately before the first meeting of the assembly after correct. the dissolution that's correct is it continuing it's a continuum it continues notwithstanding the fact that he was elected to the assembly that's correct until the new assembly takes even in dissolution even in dissolution then what happens is that the speaker vacates his office in the next session when it, when it is uh, reconvenes for us the pro tem speaker and then the pro tem speaker the the oldest member of the house normally Uh, is then this, was, uh, this was relied on by Venkata Chilaya to uphold the position of a speaker, saying that uh, he is not, he has got nothing to do with the political party. His objectivity is there, despite the house speaker continues. So therefore, he can trust the speaker as the arbiter. That we have seen that the trust, brothers. We have seen that trust <laughs> being uh, used yes, and used. That's used. the last. Uh, very long and the argument was rejected. Yes. Yes. My arg, Mr. Fat, Nariman, and my argument was this is unconstitutional. Don't give it to the speaker. But because it was rejected, it was rejected. to two. But I think the time has come when you are gone. I really think so because this is not about this case alone. These are these are quintessential questions which which will oh, on the basis of which democracy will survive. But if I then give it to the speaker, then who will decide? The court. Why should the court? It's a matter for the house. House. That's I know. That that's, argument was also rejected. That is exactly what Justice Sabarwal says in Jagmohan. Was that the court should not because it was argued saying that court can't get into the house to decide. And ultimately, if you say that this is unconstitutional, then you completely throw the baby out with the bath water. Yeah, but there is no disqualification. Well, there is no bath water left at the moment, sir. Well, sir, but the civil. Yeah, well, yeah. Otherwise, you know, if you say that, well, the entirety of it goes, then there is no provision for disqualification. That parliament will have. To make one, that's, that's the, the parliament wants to deal with morality in politics. They will have to make this. They, that this has to be done now. How will make it? What is the contours of that legislation? You don't have to go to the extreme yeah. of the power. Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm only saying, whether I'm only saying to your lordships that this is the. We will leave a royal line there, Mr. Sibal, or else it will become unending. Yeah, it will become. It will become unending, and there has to be some constitutional certainty also. I mean, no, but then you must be lay down a law, Malas, that there is some certainty because the, otherwise, Malas, what is happening is, Malas, that these matters are never heard. Your lordship knows adjournments are granted every every week, Malas, for for years. For years, these matters are not heard because the speaker is sitting there. And we come to court, and the court doesn't. Uh, But therefore, your argument on Nabam really is that the constitutional scheme does not contemplate the disqualification of the speaker merely on the issuance of a notice, or for that matter, even upon the grant of leave of court. That's right. That's right. One eighty nine says that if there is Malas equality of votes, then the casting vote is for the speaker. But when his resolution or his removal is in consideration, he can he can only now. The first is the words. How do the words? When do the words under consideration kick in? Kick in at the time when the motion is moved for consideration. Is that so, or is it? Does it kick in the moment leave is granted to move a resolution? No, by twenty nine. No, no. But the resolution may not be moved, as I said. But no, still remains under consideration. Yeah, because he, then he can't be the speaker, mother. Then how can he sit on that chair? And how can he? No, he can't be the speaker uh, in the meeting, correct? Or the day on which uh, the actual resolution is yes. taken into consideration. Yes, yes. Taken up for consideration. Absolutely, absolute. absolute. That is what your subject. That's correct. Other reason that in Rule Eleven he cannot act because no. otherwise he can't act. Grant leave. He has to be lost by who? In interestingly, both clause two and clause one. Yes. Is the expression under consideration. Yes. Now, conceivably, the word under consideration in clause one, the word un words under consideration in clause one, may not only be relatable to the date on which the resolution is taken up for consideration. That's right. That's right. In clause one, but in clause two, it is obvious that the words under consideration operate on the date when it is actually taken up for. Uh, that's right. That's right. So the question is whether we should therefore expand clause one. And say that under consideration clause two relates to a different point of time than in clause one. That's a possibility. Well, it's my respect for. What do you think should be the same? I'll tell you, Lord Chief, why the word consideration is not is not a word of art in two in in clause one. It is a word which relates to the procedure of the art. It's not an it is not a word of art. 
because truth under says, consideration truth says that you have a right he has a right to speak when it is yes, under consideration yes, yes yes now his right to speak is on the motion when it is that's speaking. correct that's correct therefore according to under one uh, where uh, he he is not entitled to preside so attach on the date when the motion that's is taken the reason is manas right. the word consideration is used in the context of procedure when when his removal is being considered so according to you therefore even when leave is granted yes. the stage of the the threshold of leave yes. is crossed even then he can really preside he, 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 there's a judgment manner of, of the ilabad i go to that effect which i showed you lord sitting the word sitting sitting it goes with the word sitting manner is this right. scheme is this scheme of 179 and 181 any manner affected by the 10 schedule no no this is our case manner it can never be these are proceedings in the house these are legislative proceedings in the house the 10th schedule is silent on what happens when there is a notice it can't manage in fact the 10th schedule there can be no cause manage because it's a constitutional authority in fact there can be no fault as i said manage that's the base it's a fundamental principle of constitutional law whether it's the election commission the government the speaker manage uh, uh, the courts there can never be a pause Once an anathema to the constitution relating to the presiding officer of the tribunal's competency. Yes. They only relate to those two. Yes. So tenth schedule to that extent will have no bearing. Doesn't apply because it's in the house. We're talking about his removal from the presiding officer. It's not. It's about his. The flip side, if you permit a speaker. I mean, we just. I mean, now you are assisting the court as counsel. Yes. Not really. Yes, 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 yes. Of course. Because we are looking now at a broader, broader constitutional issue. what would be the consequence if we allow a speaker to participate there are two stages right one just the notice the notice is of course it can be given even by one given by one person uh what would be the consequence if we of course if we don't allow the speaker to take action the moment a notice of resolution is issued that according to you would result in a very serious consequence but on the flip side what would be the consequence if we allow the speaker to participate even when the stage of say the grant of leave is crossed what would be the argument on the flip side no but there are still 29 members have to support that he might not decide no no 29 persons able is already supported and the leave is granted if they have supported others and leave is granted correct mr or the chief is i will my panel rather will explain what was falling was asking you is what will be the consequence of the speaker continuing to decide the ten schedule proceedings while a proceeding is pending after issuance of the notice as i said as, as i said yes i as i said other other line of this should be seen in the context of other line of judgments under ten schedule saying why should why is he in such a hurry to decide there must be sufficient time let me let me mulad answer that state of limits now you are interpreting 179 correct to mean that the speaker will continue to discharge his functions as a speaker correct. till the motion for his removal is put to vote correct. the purpose correct. 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 correct 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 he has no disability correct correct, correct. and till it is put to vote the motion will never be moved correct. will never be moved malak so this is civil what is why any of course is sorry sorry nas no no look okay. uh, you know now the only point is this that by giving the power to a speaker are we then going to essentially give the speaker the ultimate power to decide upon the course of his own removal no matter it's not the course of his own removal the course of the removal of those who have actually voluntarily given up membership of the party so what is it this is this is not a question of course of his own removal yeah that's because he will not tilt the balance party i'm sorry that may tilt the balance but it will balance if they have if they have voluntarily given up it will tilt the balance why should it not tilt the balance decide why should it not tilt the balance if actually but kind of forget about well now let's let's go into just a, just a, uh, uh, a short summary of facts in this case what happens in this case what happens is this notice is given this court says they can reply by 12th of july right and the government falls in the meantime and we are 8 months down the road he has not even given notice on our disqualification petitions moved in this no the person has not moved the notice and the speaker has not given a notice on disqualification petitions i mean you have seen now see the talk according to you the speaker was well within his right 
to disqualify anybody in the meantime as well because because of the facts which are undisputed you had a government a new government with the support of these people what else is it but voluntarily giving up membership of the party and then one of the argument is he is going to decide his own fate no now mr sibal we we saw the first part of nabam arabia where justice kher puts it as a matter of ethical grounds now how does he interpret yes i was going to read that let us read that we we'll go, that. we'll go so for that's the next step to yes. get across nabam yes absolutely